Good day class! Now that you have an idea about rectilinear motion, let us now proceed with relative motion. Usually, a moving body is observed by an observer who is at rest. Commonly, the position of the observer is denoted as the reference during the analysis of motion of the observed particle or object. This fixed reference is what we call absolute or Newtonian or inertial frame of reference. For most of the moving bodies, the Earth is regarded as the fixed reference, although Earth itself is moving in space. So motion referred with such reference is called absolute motion, which we have already dealt with in our previous lecture. Now how about if the reference itself is moving? For such motion, we refer that as relative motion. A simple example is this one in where an observer inside the hot air balloon is itself moving aside from the motion of what is observed below. To get a better grasp about relative motion, let's discuss this simple case example. As you can see in the figure, we have two racing cars moving with different speed along a straight track. Let's denote the white car as car A and the blue-green car as car B. Let's assume that car A and B is moving with a speed of 60 and 80 kph respectively. Based on this case example, you can observe that car A is slower than car B, which means that if you are riding the car B, you might perceive the car A to be moving backward by 20 kph. Similarly, if you are riding the car A, you might perceive car B to be moving towards you at a rate of 20 kph. But you might wonder, with these relative observations, where did that value of 20 kph come from? To answer that, let us look now at the necessary formulas that you can use to deal with relative motion. Consider this figure as our basis for the formulas. As you can see here, we have two particles denoted by A and B moving along a straight path and our reference point is at point O. As particle A moves, we can represent its position as X sub A. In the same way, for particle B, we can denote its position by X sub B. From these positions, we can find the position of particle B relative to A by just getting the difference between X sub B and X sub A. And we can represent that as X sub B over A. Notice that in the subscript, B is above A, which means that the observed particle is placed in the numerator while the observer is placed in the denominator. So based on this diagram, we now have the equation for relative position. One way to easily remember this equation is to express the relative position equal to the position of the particle indicated as numerator in its subscript minus the position of the particle indicated as denominator in its subscript. Thus, relative position of particle A with respect to B can be also express as follows. If we differentiate these two equations with respect to time, we will now have the equations for relative velocity. Notice that the pattern of the subscripts is still the same with the previous equations. When we continue to differentiate these two equations with respect to time, we will now have the equations for relative acceleration. Even here, the pattern of the subscripts still upholds. Let us now solve some sample problems about relative motion. For our first problem, we may pause the video to read the statement of the problem. Since we have here two boats moving along the same straight direction, let us denote all vectors with that same direction as positive. We are given the distance between the boats from their initial position as 50 meters 
their initial velocities as 180 kph, the final velocity of both A as 225 kph, and the elapsed time that they met equal to 8 seconds. We are then required to solve for the acceleration of each boat and the relative velocity of both A with respect to both B. Let's start with acceleration of both A. For easy handling of units, let's convert all the given velocities into meters per second. This allows us to express their initial velocities equal to positive 50 meters per second. With the given time interval and initial and final velocities of both A, we can now use this kinematic equation to get A sub A is equal to positive 1.563 meters per second squared. Next, let us solve for acceleration of both B. Let's recall these given values and the obtained acceleration of both A. If you analyze this question with the given values, you may notice that what we have now are not yet enough or not yet sufficient to solve for A sub B. When that happens, you may resort to relating the two motions, motion of both A and of both B. Using the given figure, we can set the reference at the initial position of both B. As the two boats travel until they met at 8 seconds, their position will be measured starting from the set reference. This follows that the final position of both B is equal to the final position of both A. This equation now will serve as a way to relate the two motions. For both A, we can get the final position by using the third kinematic formula. By substituting the known values, we get that X sub A is equal to positive 500 meters, which is equal to X sub B. Now that we have x sub b, we can use again the third kinematic formula and by substitution, we can notice that only variable a sub b is left unknown. This allows us to get acceleration of both b is equal to positive 3.125 meters per second square. Now, let's proceed with the last question, the relative velocity of both a with respect to B at the time that they met. Let's recall again the given and obtained values. Take note that for this problem, the observer is on both B while the observed body or particle is both A. Since we have already the final velocity of both A, let us solve for the final velocity of both B using the second kinematic equation. By substitution, we now obtain its final velocity as positive 75 meters per second. Finally, we can now apply the formula for relative velocity. Always notice the subscript pattern that was explained a while ago to easily recall this formula. We now substitute their final velocities while making sure that we also carry their signs. This gives us a final answer of negative 12.5 meters per second. The negative sign indicates that if you are riding the boat B, you might perceive boat A to be moving towards you with this magnitude. For our next problems, kindly refer to the next part of this lecture. So that's it for now. Thank you class and God bless.